Welcome, Fire and Glory family. How's everyone doing tonight? Come on, we're on night 1624. We're hearing reports of revival breaking out in various parts of the nation. God is on the move. It's an exciting day to be alive. Prophecy is being fulfilled. Thank you, Father. We worship you tonight. God, we give you glory and honor and praise. We thank you, God, that you speak your word and you keep your word. And Lord, that your word is going forth. You watch over it to perform it. And God, the reports that we're hearing, they're just only going to spread. God, there's going to be spreading all across to the university campuses, Almighty God. All the young people, God, into the high schools, God. Lord, there's going to be not just revival. There's going to be radical transformation, Father, That the um, from the superintendents all the way down. Lord, your spirit's going to move. And God, there's going to be curricula change. God, hearts are going to be transformed. That these agendas that the, the enemy has put into the school system will be utterly revealed for what they are and God you are going to be reigning on the king we thank you God even as what's happening in, K in Kentucky classes will be canceled as people go to gyms and in their classrooms out on the fields and they will be praying they'll be exalting you lifting your name on high oh God and Lord while well, we thank you Lord God that you are moving and that people are giving their hearts to you Lord we thank you for a fresh outpouring of your spirit God, we thank you for a baptizing afresh and anew. That, Lord, it's not going to just be conversions to Christ, but it's going to be people that actually are filled with the Spirit and clothed from on high, that will be operating with power from on high and enter in to become sons and daughters of the King. God, we thank you, oh God, that these revivals will not just stay on Christian campuses or in, or in churches, but, Father, it's going to move like waves wave after wave after wave out into the streets. It's going to go into the highways. It's going to go into the byways, oh God. And your house will be filled. Father, we thank you, God. God, we thank you that you're stirring up in us even now. Lord God, a passion for the harvest. As it says in Matthew chapter 9, that you, when you looked upon the multitudes, you had compassion on them. And you said, pray ye, Lord of the harvest, that you'd send laborers into the harvest field. And from there, you commissioned your disciples. And you said, go, lay hands on the sick, see them recover, cast out devils, raise the dead, cleanse the leper. Lord God, Lord, we want to see that, God, is not just one or two or a handful of people, but Lord, all of us want to get involved. All of us are called to be a part of your army. All of us, Lord, for such a time as this, that Lord, when they come and they say, well, who's involved here? And then, then, the, then they'll hear about something going on somewhere else. It's because all your children, nameless, faceless, to be too many of us running around, seeing salvation, seeing signs and wonders. God, we thank you. We thank you for what you're doing in this day and in this hour. We glorify you, almighty God. And Lord, may your name be praised. We thank you, God, that this move, it isn't going to be about a ministry. It's not going to be about a church. This is going to be unto your name and to your name alone. That your name will receive all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise, oh God. This is about your reputation. This is about your kingdom. And God, we thank you, Father, that you did not abandon America, that people have said this country's just going down the twos, but you said, uh-uh. I'm bringing a great awakening into this nation. I'm changing things in this nation that just at the lowest point when the enemy thinks that he's won, I'm turning things around and my son is going to be seated on the throne in this nation. God, we thank you not just in one state or two states, but all 50 states and the surrounding territories. Revival is going to break out, oh God. We thank you, almighty God, that cities will be transformed. Just like God in the, in the videos where cities around the world were touched by the power of God as the body of Christ came together in unity to stand with one name, one purpose. And God, we just pray even for that right now, that the body of Christ would lose the walls of division. And that, Lord, that we come together, that we recognize that there is one God, there is one faith, there is one baptism, there is one spirit, 
And God, that there is nothing else. All these other doctrines, all these things we divide that we divide over, that those are worthless, God. That we need to come together. That we need to be one with you. That we need to hang on to the Christ being the head and not be, let ourselves be the head any longer. That God, that we would come together as every part of the body functioning as a unit. Oh God, to see this, um, these, you see your kingdom advance. We cannot do it individually. We need to do it together. So Lord, we pray for the body to come together as one unit, to come together in one spirit, oh God, to see your kingdom come, to see your will be done, to take territories, to take cities, to take counties, to take states and nations for the name of Jesus Christ. That God, that when the Israelites went into the promised land, one, one tribe could not take the land by itself, but the, all 12 tribes had to go in together as one army. And Lord God, we thank you that we aren't assemblies of God, we're not Baptists, we're not Calvary Chapel, we're not all these different things, but we are the body of Christ. That there is Jesus, he alone is king, and this is his church. This is his body, oh God, and we thank you that you've called us for this day and this hour to be joined together with him, in him. And Lord, we thank you that his spirit flows through us to pour out to people around us. God, we ask that you would give us eyes for the harvest field, that even as Jesus, you looked on the people with compassion, may we do the same. May we not look at people as targets and saying that person needs to be evangelized or that person needs to needs healing or whatever, but God, we see through the eyes of compassion. And through the eyes of compassion, everything else will follow. We thank you, Almighty God, that through love that we will see this city changed. We thank you, God, that through love that the poor will be fed and clothed and sheltered. We thank you, God, that through love demons will be cast out. We thank you, God, that through love, healings will occur. The dead will raise, oh God. Lepers will be cleansed. We thank you, almighty God, that communities will be transformed by the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We praise you, God. Right now, I just speak against all the fears and anxieties that are coming up over loss of food, over loss of money, over wars and rumors of wars. We say, all fear, go right now in Jesus' name. God, we just release the peace, your peace, into this room. And to all those storms, we say, peace, be still. We thank you, God, for raising up all your sons and your daughters to having confidence in you, to recognize that, yes, in this world, we will indeed have troubles, but we need to take heart because you've overcome the world. We thank you, God, that you're our peace no matter what's going on around us. We can be firm. We can be secure. We can be unmoved because you've already overcome. We praise you, God, and we worship you. We thank you, God, that you've made us to be more than conquerors in Christ. That God, not just conquerors, but more than conquerors, oh God. That Lord, that whenever we come into a situation, even as Jesus, you encountered the storm, that the peace that is, resides in us becomes the answer to the turmoil around us. That, Lord God, we ask for forgiveness for letting the dictates of the world determine how we're going to think, how we're going to act. But instead, God, we choose this day to turn from all of that and to say, God, you're our peace, you're our hope, and we're going to walk like that is so. We're going to live like that is so. We're going to think like that is so. And that when those around us are freaking out, we're not going to come into the freakouts, God. But instead, we're going to say, this is why I've got a hope. This is why I'm not moved. And you can have that same hope, too. God, we praise you. We thank you, God. And Lord, we thank you even in the days ahead that you're raising up sons and daughters in here to be resources for the world around them. That God, that people are going to be looking at what's in their cabinet. They're going to see five loaves and two fish and they're going to say, thank you, Father. You provided this and you're going to multiply it and we're going to reach my neighborhood. We're going to reach my city with what I have in my cabinet. Lord, we thank you that the resources of heaven 
are far above and beyond what we have on this earth. And Lord God, forgive us for thinking earthly minded instead of heavenly minded. That we look to you as our source. We look to you as our provider. We look to you, almighty God, because from you, you said, pray your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, O God. So Lord, we need to have a perspective of what's in heaven. We need to have a perspective that you have everything in heaven that you have all the resources, you have healing, you have deliverance. And not only that, God, while our physical bodies are here on earth, you took us and you seated us together in the heavenly places with your son. So while our physical bodies are on earth, spiritually we're already seated in those heavenly places. And so we're gonna grab hold of the resources you've given us access to, and we're gonna release it here on earth, oh God. And so that earth will become like your home, like your throne, oh God. We thank you, oh God, that even in this day and in this hour, that Lord, we're gonna see what, um, what you commanded Adam and Eve, that to have dominion over all the earth, that Lord, we're gonna see the environment, we're gonna see nature respond to the command of your sons and daughters. That God, places that they said are done, that they're gonna be arid places that is too polluted, we're gonna see life come forth. We're going to see soil be healed. We're going to see fish populations restored into the seas. God, we thank you, O Lord God, that the earth is groaning, waiting for the manifestation of the sons and daughters of the living God. And Lord, if none other will grab on it, we here in this room and those watching online, we say, us, Lord. Lord, we will raise up in your sons and daughters that we will be the answer to the groans of all creation, O God that we will be ones that will choose to manifest as sons and daughters and to come forth to see all the earth manifest the way that you desire, God, to see your kingdom come and your will be done, Father. We glorify you, God. God, I thank you that you're going to give us a greater revelation of Christ the healer. That God, that you're going to bring us into this day and this hour where, Lord, we're coming to a place where we cannot let sickness, disease, or anything else hinder us anymore. We cannot allow pandemics to hit our bodies. Instead, we have to be the answer. That Lord God, um, we want to be ones that people say, hey, don't touch that person because he's sick. And we say, really? Here, I'm gonna release the river of God because that thing ain't swimming up the river coming out of my body. It doesn't have the strength to come up the current that I'm releasing. We thank you, oh God, that we're going to walk in divine health and we're going to bring divine healing to those around us, oh God. We thank you, God, for those things that people are saying there's no cure for that. We go, oh yeah, we know Dr. Jesus. That thing, that thing goes and it's going to bow its knee right now. We thank you for that, almighty God. We worship you for that, oh God. We thank you, God, that we're going to see the impossible made possible because you said all things are possible to him and her who believes. We praise you, God. We worship you. And God, we give you glory tonight. We thank you, God, for being able to come here and glorify you, God. Take us to a new level, God. Take us deeper into your heart, almighty God. We want to know you, God. We want to be close to you, almighty God. And Lord, most of all, we want to be found in you. We love you, God, and we exalt you in Jesus' name.
your face we can see. Come teach us, Lord, reveal your ways, anoint us for the great. Fill this place. Come and fill this place. Come and fill this place. Yeah. And our single wish, our soul desire to gaze on. Fill this place. Come and fill this place. Come and fill this place. Yeah. God, we wait. Yeah. 
we wait for you. God, we wait for you. We wait for you. Cause I will spend all my days singing your praise. I will spend all my days praising your holy name. Cause I will spend all my days singing your praise. I will spend all my days praising your holy name. Cause I will spend all my days singing your praise. I will spend all my days praising your holy name. So I will spend all my days singing your praise. I will spend all my days praising your holy name. Sweet so wait, so I will spend you all my days singing your praise. Show your glory. I will spend all my days praising your holy name. And all this is for 
lives are yours we want you god we want you so come and consume god all we are we give you permission our hearts are yours we want you we want you After we, after we, it's pouring out loud. 
Your name. 
find me. Your love got a hold of me. I'm a 
communion And I was made by you I was made for you I am unfulfilled Without full communion
confidence that you will lead me. When my heart begins to fade and my strength is gone away, I will be sustained.
and stand upon your name when all else fades. Your promises remain. I stand Promises remain.
I've got nothing new. How could I express all my gratitude? I could sing these songs as I often do. But every song must end, and you never do. So I throw up my hands, praise you again and again. So that I have is a hallelujah, hallelujah. And I know it's not much, but I'm nothing else fit for a king, except for a heart singing why I will worship you I've got one response I've got just one move with my arms stretched wide I will worship you
124. Come on. Who's ready for tonight? Who's ready to receive? Come on. Give Jesus a big shout of praise. 
Cool. All right, so I'm gonna go with my announcement, um, missions. So um, I know Molly's gonna put it on, this, uh, on the screen tonight. I'm gonna move on the side. How many of you are ready to be part of this amazing, amazing thing that God is doing in this place? Oh, Lord, we thank you. We thank you for the mission. So I, I encourage everybody to partner with you, in, to partner with the Lord, to partner in prayer, and to hear the voice of God. We have seen so many miracles. We have seen supernatural provision that the Lord has provided. Just when you partner and you believe the Lord will provide, the Lord we make, we make space, even with wood. Work. If you don't have like hours, the Lord will make that for you. So I just encourage you, encourage everybody to partner with the Lord in prayer and to just say yes to whatever God is telling you. Uh, we have our Philippines deadline application April 16. I encourage you to just, if the Lord told you, just in faith, put in your application. The Lord will make a way for you. And it's filling up pretty quickly. So I encourage you, you uh, go online on our elashorevolution.com website slash mission. All the information is there for you guys. Uh, I also want to do mention that uh, Sunday, it's an hour encounter night, and we have uh, Chad Deadman with us tonight. He's a, a, such a revivalist. He's a, his heart on fire for the Lord. He will bring revelation and amazing messages, so don't miss out. It's going to be amazing. And I also want to do mention of the Israel tour. It's going to be November 12th to the 20th. I want to say the application are filling up pretty quickly. So if you're really interested, that you feel like the Lord has put this on your heart, please put in your application. There is a, such a supernatural anointing for everybody that takes part of this tour with the Lash Revolution team. I encourage you to just pray on it and see what the God, God is telling you and the Lord is telling you on this. And last mention that I'm going to do is the Women Encounters Night. How many of you were at the last meeting last month? Come on. Miranda is amazing, a fiery revivalist. So she brought such a fire revelation message. It was beautiful. It was so powerful. So I encourage you, don't miss out. It's going to be February 27. It's the last Monday of the month. And be ready and come on time because last time we were packed. There was so many people. So come before. It's 730. The door is open. But just be there earlier to get your seat and be ready to receive from the Lord. Yeah, <laughs> so um, I'm going to come down. Who's ready to give tonight? Come on. Yeah. Who's ready to give? <laughs> I have a message um, I want to read. Just a second, I'm going to uh, get my scriptures. That's what the Lord has put uh, today in my heart for tonight offering. How many of you know that? When we sow into this ministry, what we, uh, what we reap, it's so supernatural. You know, the Lord opened the finances. The Lord opened the events of our life. When we sow into this ministry, you guys that have been part of this ministry with us for the past seven years have seen the fruit of the Spirit, the million soul salvation, feeding of the poor, and all the supernatural spiritual um, reaping that we get. So... How many of you are really ready to give tonight? <laughs> really, really. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to be reading from uh, Malachi 3, uh, 10 to 12. I'm going to start in verse 10. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. And try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such a blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes so that he will not destroy the fruit of your ground, nor shall the vine fail to bear fruit for you in the field, says the Lord of hosts. And all nations will call you blessed, for you will be a delightful land, says the Lord of hosts. Come on, this message is so powerful. What is God telling us here? That when we bring a portion of our income to the storehouse that God has designated for us in heaven, there is a storehouse for each one of us, for each one of us in heaven. When we bring our part of our income to the storehouse, God will open the heaven. He says right here in his word, he will open the heaven and there is going to be such an abundance, such a prosperity that there is going to be no room for story. This is so powerful and this is such a supernatural provision. I love how 
in these verses, God is called the Lord of hosts. The word host here means angels. The Lord of armies angels. It means that angels are involved in this process. It's supernatural because as the Lord blessed us and opened the heavens, the uh, angels are assigned on our life to enforce and to protect the blessing that God is bringing to our life. Oh, Jesus, you're so good. And then he says, I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. Why? Satan, the devourer, he's here to do what? Destroy the fruit of our ground. He wants to destroy the fruit of our field. But God will rebuke it. And I love how God speaks about this at the end of the Old Testament in Malachi. But then Jesus picks it up in the New Testament. In John 10.10, 10, he says, the devil is here to kill, steal, and destroy. I'm paraphrasing. But Jesus came here to give us life, a life more abundantly. God is rebuking the devourer in Malachi in John 10.10. 10. And what happened that Jesus comes with abundance, which is the abundance that he's speaking about in the storehouse that God has designated in heaven for us. Come on, this is so powerful. I encourage you tonight to give. I feel like there is an, uh, an anointing for supernatural provision. These verses are supernatural. Angels are involved. The heavens are open over our lives. So if you feel like God is speaking to you right now, just be obedient uh, Jeremy tell us all the time, radical obedience to the Lord brings manifestation of his kingdom in our lives. So I encourage you, be obedient, radical obedience, and uh, bring your seed. Um, I'm going to bring the basket up here, and just do what God tells you to do, and we will pray over it after. Um, Molly is going to put on some music. There is different ways that we have to give. There is an envelope in front of your seats. You can uh, uh, give on our free app, Elisha Revolution, uh, on ElishaRevolution.com. Also, text to give. There is also checks that you can make um, to Elisha Revolution. Um, so, yeah, whatever the, tells you, whatever the Lord tells you, you just be obedient and you do it. So I give you a couple of minutes and just come and bring your seeds. Amen. Bless these seeds, God, that they will multiply 30, 60, 100 folds, Father God. We thank you, Father, for the blessing. God, we call for cancellation of debts of our bank account. We plead the blood of Jesus of our bank accounts, Father God. We call for multiplication and the promotion in our jobs, God. The supernatural provision, supernatural reaping of the finances of the kingdom of God. We thank you, Father. We bless it in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And now, without any further ado, I invite a very fiery woman of God, Jen McNicholas. Tonight is going to be bringing the word of the Lord. Give her a big uh, clap of hands. Welcome, Jen.
Thank you, guys. Um, first, I just want to pray. Um, Father, I just thank you. I thank you, Holy Spirit. I thank you, Jesus, for just being here, for what you've already done tonight. We just magnify your name. We glorify your name in this place tonight, Jesus. That you alone are worthy, Jesus. You alone are worthy of all of the honor, all of the praise, all of the glory. We magnify you. We're here for you. We want to make room for you tonight, Holy Spirit, to come and have your way. Come and move amongst us, Holy Spirit. We make room for you tonight, Holy Spirit. We make room. Do what you want to do. Do what you want to do tonight, Holy Spirit. We've gathered to know you more. And during worship, I just had, um, I don't know if it's someone in this room or if it's someone online, but I had the sense that there's someone um, and it's a pretty private thing if it's, uh, if it's you and you want to come up to me afterwards, I'll pray for you. But I just had this sense that there's someone who's really struggling with suicide tonight. And so I just want to pray for that person. Um, whether you're online, if you're online and you feel comfortable putting that in there, um, um, you know, there's people online that will minister to you also. But I just want to pray. So, Father, whoever this person is right now that is struggling with, with suicide, Father, I just thank you for hope coming into their life right now, Lord. I thank you for hope being infused into their life, Lord. I thank you, Father, for just coming and your love being uh, displayed in a tangible way right now in the name of Jesus. And I just break off those lies um, that you're no good that you're not worth anything, that you're rejected and set aside and looked over. And I just speak the love of the Father over you right now in the name of Jesus. And we thank you, Father. We thank you for your great love invading that person's life right now. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. Who we thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Whoa. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I just want to wait a minute. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Whoa. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So I just want to introduce myself a little bit. As some of you may know, I'm Jen McNicholas. I am the missions coordinator for Elisha Revolution. I have had the honor and the blessing and privilege to be able to go and travel with Jeremy Miranda on their crusade trips for the last year. And we have seen some amazing things. But prior to that, my husband and I were missionaries for three years in South Africa. Um, we got to see some amazing things. Uh, God did some amazing things while we were there. Um, we've done ministry for many years, and we love being with Jeremy Miranda. We've known Jeremy Miranda for a very long time. We were with them when they originally moved to San Diego in 2009, and so it's been such a blessing for my husband and I to be able to be back in San Diego um, and just be with them and run with them, and they are an amazing couple to be able to run with. We have an amazing team that... Um, that is here, and so it's such an honor and a blessing. And so I'm super honored and excited to be able to share with you tonight what the Lord has put on my heart. Um, and so um, bear with me. I, I'm a little nervous, but I'm going to get through because the Lord is 
is with me. So, um, but yeah, so what, what the Lord really put, I feel like one of the things the Lord wants to um, do tonight is he really wants to remove guilt, condemnation, and shame from people. So much of our lives, we feel guilty for, for our past, what we've done. We feel ashamed of things that we've said, the actions that we've made, um, and we live under condemnation, even though we've been set free in Christ. Um, and so when I was preparing um, to speak, I felt like the Lord wanted to deal with the little old me. You know, we look at little old me and don't think that we can do anything for the Lord because I have been a horrible person. I have called people names. I have cheated on my husband. I have stolen money. I have done this or I have done that. I've gotten divorced. I have had an abortion. I have done all these different things. And the enemy loves to come and he loves to whisper in our ear and say, no, you can't do it. You know, you can't do it because of da 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 Because we don't know who we are in Christ. It, that, that's, that's what it, it boils down to. And I know for me, it's one of the things the Lord is working on this year. He's placed me in the book of Ephesians and he said, you need to know who you are in Christ because of what he's paid for us. Paid for us to walk in. And so much of the time, we allow our past to dictate what our present and our future is going to be. And he has so much more for us. And that's just the exciting, exciting journey. I feel like I want to be a, a mama tonight and come around and, and put my arm around people and say, no, this is who you are. This is what Christ paid for. And this is who we get to be in him. He wants to use the little old me. I may be small in stature, but I have seen God do some amazing things this last year. You wouldn't know it by looking at me, but I have seen God. I have placed my hands on people's deaf ears and seen them open. I have placed my hands on blind eyes and seen them open. I have placed my hand on a woman's womb, two women's wombs, where their babies were dead, and I spoke life, and they came back to life. And that has nothing to do with, with me. It has to do with Christ in me. And, you know, one of the things, I'm getting a little ahead of myself, but one of the things that, you know, that the Holy Spirit said to me, um, one time was he said, you know, you need to stop saying these certain things over your life. Because when you say those things about yourself, you actually hurt my heart. And so when we agree with what the enemy says about us and we just speak it over ourselves, I'm just dumb. I, I'm never going to lose the weight that I want to lose. I, I do this. I do that. And it actually hurts the heart of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. You know, he has a heart. Mm -hmm. And so when he said that to me, I realized I really have to watch my words and what I say over myself. And I'm not oh, I'm not good at it all the time. You can ask my husband. I have to work on that. But we have to watch what we allow to come out of our mouths because it hurts the heart of the Holy Spirit. And when you look at things like that, it's like, wow, I don't want to hurt the heart of the Holy Spirit. I don't want to hurt the heart of the Father. And I don't want to hurt the heart of my Jesus. And that's, that's why we don't. It's like, you know, there's all these rules and regulations on what we should do and what we shouldn't do. But really, our lives have to come out of that place of, I don't want to hurt the heart of my Jesus. So I'm not going to say the things that he wouldn't say about me. And I'm not going to do the things that he wouldn't want me to do. You know, it's, yeah. So, and it's just amazing. 
because he wants to take each one of us by the hand and he wants us, you know, I remember Tracy Armstrong was talking about when the, the Lord said to Miranda when she was on a walk, he was like, isn't that amazing? He asked Miranda to continue to go on a walk with them. And today the Holy, the Holy Spirit said to me, I want to take everybody's hand and I want to take them on a walk. That's what he longs for. It's like he's waiting on the path for us to take us on that walk. And so, and one of the things, you know, I think when we, like in disqualifying ourselves, one of the big things that we do is we compare ourselves. It's like, well, look at the way Luba just brought that offering. Man, Luba can preach. She should be up there instead of me. No, <laughs> you know, it's like we compare ourselves and we really shouldn't do that. And that's part of what we do when we disqualify ourselves is we compare. It's like, you know, I have a, a husband who is an amazing studier of the word. I mean, he can tell you uh, all the scriptures I'm going to share tonight. He could tell you the Greek word, the Hebrew word, the meanings of it. And what is it? A, I don't even know, some kind of pronoun and <laughs> verb and all these different things. He can break it down like that. But that's not how... I'm wired, and I, I could compare myself to Miranda. She's very, very similar to that. But that's not the way that God speaks to me. Or I can compare myself to this person and that person, but it's not. God, God doesn't, he doesn't, he doesn't want us to do that. He wants us to find out, like he said, I'm study, like I said earlier, I'm studying the book of Ephesians right now. And so I bought this. I love there's this theologian. His name's N.T. Wright. And if you listen to him, he's very monotone. But if you really listen to him, he is an amazing, like he goes deep in the word. And Miranda has done a study on the book of Ephesians. And so I got notes from Miranda and I got my N.T. Wright book. And I'm like, and then the Holy Spirit says to me, I want to show you how I want you to learn the book of Ephesians. And I was like, okay, well, what does that mean? Um, but I'm not a dumb person, so I'm going to glean from what Miranda did. And I'm going to glean from N.T. Wright. But also the Holy Spirit wants to take me and he wants to take us on a journey in relationship. And so it's... You know, we have to, one of the things that just is really was burning in my heart is this real comparison thing. Like, we have to stop comparing. Because then it's like we're lifting up that other person. When we compare, or when I compare myself to how my husband learns and studies, I'm lifting him up in a negative way. It's like I'm idolizing him instead of going, okay, God, what, how do you want me to learn this? How do you want me to, to do this? And, you know, we learn from each other, but we have to recognize also we're not, we're not going to do it all the same. And we're not supposed to do it all the same, which is just, you know, that's freeing when we can think about it. It's like he's got a different way. For each one of us. It's like, I will never be able to be a six-foot model. That just is not, I'm five, two, barely. And that's not, that's just not what I'm going to be. So, um, but yeah, so one of the things I wanted to talk about also was, you know, just, um, the, you know, when we, when we compare ourselves, we look at other people and we think they're better than us or whatever, you know, it's, you know, it's not healthy for us to do that. Um, and I just think of what would David would have, what would he have done? You know, like if he just stood around and he compared himself, he was, he was most likely um, born an illegit from an illegitimate relationship. Um, and he was one that you would not have thought would have been chosen. He was in the field when Samuel came to anoint the new king. 
And um, I'm just going to turn there and read. But he was one that would have been like un unlikely that you would choose him. He was the youngest. He was a shepherd. And he was not even there when Samuel came to anoint the new king. He was still in the field. So I want you to turn with me to 1 Samuel 16. And I'm going to start in verse 6. And please, I will probably butcher these Hebrew names. <laughs> Just have grace. Um, so 1 Samuel 6, I'm going to do 6 and 7. When they came, he looked on Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed is before me. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look on his appearance or on the height or of his stature, because I have rejected him. For the Lord sees not as a man sees. Man looks on the outward appearance, but but the, the Lord looks on the heart. And so we start there where it's like Samuel goes to anoint the new king. And, and he goes uh, in, to Jesse. And he says, you know, Jesse, come with me. I want to go make an offering. And so Jesse gathers all of his sons, minus one, all of his sons, and they, are, they consecrate themselves. And so Samuel's like, okay, here we go. We're going to anoint the new king. And here comes this man who's the oldest of Jesse's kids. And I would just imagine he's probably, he's very big in stature. He looks very kingly. And so Samuel's like, oh, this has to be it. On the outward appearance, it looks like he is going to be the choice for the new king. And the Lord says, oh, no, Samuel. He is not the one. And so then he goes through all of his sons. And he goes down the line. And then Samuel, in verse 11, Samuel says, Then Samuel said to Jesse, Are all your sons here? And he said, There remains yet the youngest. But behold, he is keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, Send and get him, for we will not sit down till he comes here. And he sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and had beautiful eyes and was handsome. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is he. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brothers. And the spirit of the Lord rushed upon David. And from that day forward, and Samuel arose and went to Ramah. And that, it just amazes me because David, like us, we are the unlikely chosen. He found us when we were at our worst and he said, no, you're mine. And you may look like the unlikely chosen, but he doesn't look at that. He looks at our hearts. He doesn't look at our exterior, exterior stuff, even the exterior stuff that we've done. He doesn't look at that. He looks at our hearts, and he sees us through Jesus now. When we're in Christ, he sees us blood washed through the blood of the lamb that has made us white as snow and he says, this is the one that I want. All the, uh, the ones that people, the ones that people have rejected, the ones that have, people have put aside. They're the ones that I want. And he, he wants our hearts. And he sees that. And it's just so, I mean, when you think about that, it's like, oh my goodness. Even when my father and my mother have left me, you never forsake me. And that is just like, when we let that get in us, it's like we let that get in our hearts. Then the things, I love something that Dan Moeller said one time, and correct me if I don't say it right. Um, oh, no, it just went, phew. Um, 
he said one, yeah, he said one time about, um, about love. He was talking about love. It's like, you didn't, you didn't give me love. So therefore you can't take love from me. Like he's talking about people. I got it kind of right. Right. Um, but, um, so, you know, it's like when we really get that, the love of the father for us, nobody can take it from us because they didn't give it to us. He gave it to us. And he says in Romans that nothing will ever separate us from that love. And that's just amazing that when we get that, just his amazing love for us and what he's done for us and what he has for us. It's just, it's so incredible and it's so freeing. All the things that people say about us, all the things that people do to us, all the things that, you know, that go wrong in the world. It's like, but when we have the love of the Father and we know that, it sets us free. And it sets us free to, to be who he's made us to be and to be that love that this world needs. I mean, there is a lost and dying world out there that needs the love that we have. The love that we carry, they need it. Um, and so the, the next example that I want to use is, um, is in um, John 6, and it's the little boy that has the loaves and the fishes. I want to go back to that unlikely you know, the one who is unlikely to be chosen. And so it's John 6, starting in verse 1. Let me get there. Phones are wonderful, but <laughs> sometimes they take a moment. Oh, thank you, Jesus. After this, so this is where for the feeding of the 5,000. It said, after this, Jesus went away to the other side of the Sea of Galilee. Note, and if you, in Israel, this is a, oh man. When you go to the Sea of Galilee, like I can just see myself right now standing there looking at the Sea of Galilee. And, like, and then you read these stories, like these accounts, not stories that makes them sound like they're not true. When you read these accounts of what Jesus did, and then you're standing on the Sea of Galilee. Oh, man. So come to Israel with us. It's amazing. After this, Jesus went away to the other side of the, of the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias. And a large crowd was following him because they saw the signs that he was doing on, on the sick. Jesus went up on the mountain, and there he sat down with his disciples. Now the Passover, the feast of the Jews, was at hand. Lifting up his eyes then, and seeing that a large crowd was coming toward him, Jesus said to Philip, Where are we to buy bread so that, they, um, so that these people may eat? He said, he said this to test him, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered him, 200 denarii would, <clears throat> worth of bread would not be enough for each of them to get a little. One of the disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, there is a boy, <laughs> a little boy. There is a boy here who has five loaves, barley loaves, and two fish. But what are they for so many? Um, what are they for so many? Jesus said, have the people sit down. Now there was a much grass in the place. So I did, yeah, I just want to finish. So the men sat down, about 5,000 in number. Jesus took the loaves. Um, then, he, um, then he had given thanks. He distributed them to those who were seated. See also um, the fish as much as they wanted. And when they had eaten their fill, he told the disciples, gather up the leftover fragments that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up and filled 12 baskets with fragments 
from the five barley loaves left, um, <clears throat> by, left by those who had eaten. But isn't that amazing? There was a little boy. They don't even put his name in the Bible. A little boy. And Jesus takes what he brings. He brings five loaves and he brings two fish. And you have 5,000 men. They're not accounting the women and the children which, and servants that were with these 5,000 men. And Jesus takes five loaves and two fish and he feeds everybody with it. And when that's amazing, but the gift that this little boy brought and he said, here, to Andrew, he said, here, I have five loaves and two fish. Take it and see what you can do with it. Could you imagine what that little boy felt like that day? It doesn't say we can extrapolate on it, but it doesn't say what he felt like. But I can imagine he's this little boy and he gives everything he had to Andrew, who gives it to Jesus, and it feeds all of these people. Could you imagine how that changed his life? He was not the same after that day. I'll tell you right now, he was telling everybody what Jesus did with his five loaves and two fish. He proclaimed who Jesus was. It doesn't say it. I can't prove it bi biblically. But can you imagine if you gave the five loaves and two fish? What would that have been like? That's pretty amazing to think. And that's what he's asking of us. What is your five loaves and your two fish? And what are you going to give to the king? And we need to stop comparing, okay, well, mine's not gluten-free like Miranda's is. Mine has got raisins in it. Mine is, and you know, we have to stop doing that to ourselves. We have to stop it because it's not what he, what he would have us do. We need to say to him, here are my five gluten-free raisin loaves, and I want you to do I don't like fish, so I would probably just have the gluten-free raisin loaves. So here they are. Here they are. And use them the way that you want to. You know, when I got the honor of praying for that woman in Tanzania, for her baby to be raised from the dead, all I said was, Jeremy gives the word of knowledge, and all I said was, Jesus, I want it to be me. I want to pray for her. And the lady came to me out of all the thousands of people that are in that place. She came to me. And I got to give my five loaves and two fish that day. And I got to speak hope to her. And just because I, I said, here, I am a foolish thing. Use me the way you want to use me. You know, it says in um, 1 um, Corinthians, I want to go there. Oh, Jesus, you're so good. 1 Corinthians 1. For consider your calling, brothers. Not many of you were, were wise according to worldly standards. Not many were powerful. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. God chose what is low and despised in the world, even things that are not, um, to bring to nothing things that are, 
so that no human being might boast in the presence of God. And because of him, um, and because of him, you are in Christ Jesus, who became to us wisdom from God, righteousness and sanctification and redemption, so that as it is written, let the one who boasts, boasts in the Lord. You know, he wants to use, he wants to use, he wants to not use, that's such a, Todd and I were talking about that word earlier. He wants to use us. No, he wants to partner with us. He wants, he wants to come alongside and partner with us so that we can advance his kingdom. He wants to partner with us. He, it's like, oh, it's so amazing that the creator of the universe wants to partner with us. He wants to walk alongside us and say, okay, come on, let's go. Okay, you see that person over there? They need some hope today. You see that person over there? They just need a hug. You know, I heard a story one time of a man that, uh, because he left a note behind, uh, he jumped off of the Golden Gate Bridge and they found a note that he had left. And he said, if one person would have smiled at me, I would not have jumped off this bridge today. We can make such a difference in people's lives and we don't even know it. Just by being kind to someone, we can change their day. Just by acknowledging someone is there. Like, hey, Kathy, thanks for your help today as you're checking out at the grocery store instead of being on our phone and texting that person. You know, I'm speaking to myself. I'm not like pointing my finger at you guys. I'm speaking to myself too, because I need to stop and acknowledge the one. You know, when I was in Mozambique, um, I was blessed to be able to go to Heidi and um, Roland Baker's um, Children's Center in Maputo, Mozambique. And um, they have this sign as you, because they have quarters for the guests at their Maputo Center. And um, as you go out the door, because there's only one door that goes in and out, and as you go out the door, it has, it has their like motto, is probably not the right word to say, but it has on there, it says, stop for the one. And that's really what it's about. It's about stopping for the one, acknowledging the person that's before us. And we never know what it's gonna do. I mean, you can ask Ariel. He works at Vigalucci's. There's a big difference when someone comes in and they're like super rude to you and they just kind of treat you horrible as opposed to someone who actually stops and says, hey, how are you doing today? <laughs> Instead of just like, you know, this is horrible food. <laughs> you need to take it back. Although I'm sure that doesn't happen there because they have amazing food at that restaurant. But, but yeah, he just, I really... Um, I really, it's like we, who we are, I just really want to encourage us in who we are and who we can be and what Christ paid for us so that we get to be his children and shine the light. It talks about us arising and is shining for the light has come in Isaiah 60. It's time for us as a body of Christ to arise and shine and be who he's made us to be because this world needs it. I mean, I'm sure you, everybody knows what's going on in this crazy world right now. And, and people need hope. And that was, you know, backtracking, praying for that lady in Tanzania. I had my interpreter with me, this sweet young girl named Sarah. And, and we're, you know, we're praying together and we're praying for this girl. And the thing that struck me was, the hope, because this, this woman had just told her family, my baby is dead in my womb. She had just told her family. And now her baby is brought back to life. And the hope, the hope that that brings, not only her, but her family. Like her family knows 
baby is dead. She's, this is like, this now? Baby is coming, <laughs> coming again. This is amazing, the hope that that brought. And that's what the interpreter, Sarah, and I got to speak to this lady. Because after we prayed for that, she got up on the stage, gave the testimony. She came down, and Sarah and I got to minister to her more. And got to share that with us. Like, okay, you know, God brought your baby back for a reason. Like, this, ba- this, this kid's going to change this, the country of Tanzania. You know, I was dead. Now I'm alive. That, man, I'm excited. That is like, that's going to be amazing, you know? And the hope that that's going to bring, that God takes the dead things in our lives and he brings them back to life. That that is, he brings hope and he brings restoration. And it's it's amazing that we get to partner with him and walk with him. And, you know, on a side note, little bunny trail. Um, ask my husband. I do them all the time. Ask Molly. <laughs> ask Christina. Uh, <laughs> but, um, you know, um, one of the amazing things that we are, we are going to see this year, and if you want to see an amazing testimony. It's the very first baby that Jeremy got to pray for to be raised from the dead in Burundi. I'm praying that baby comes there to the crusade this next year because that is going to be amazing and it's going gonna, it's gonna to light the place on fire because that is like, yeah, that's going to be amazing because the baby, oh, I be, let's see, what month is it? Yeah, that baby is born now. And so... It's going to be awesome. If you guys want to get lit on fire, come. Because we're going to see some amazing things this year. God, it's just going to keep getting better because that's who he is. So another little hug around your shoulder that I want to give you tonight is I want to go to the book of Ephesians. I told my husband, I said, I feel like I'm taking a sharp right turn when I go here. But he's like, no, it all fits together. (laughs) So so I just want to encourage you guys because all the book of Ephesians, if if you're not planted in a book, go to the book of Ephesians because it's amazing. Like, it's so amazing what's in there. And I'm only in chapter one. I haven't gotten out. I'm 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 still in chapter one. I, it's like, I'm not leaving that. Can you help me with that? Thank you. I'm not leaving that book. He told me, stay there, so I'm staying there. Thank you, Boba. Okay, so I'm going to start. Oh, come on, let's get excited for what God has for us in the book of Ephesians. It's so good. I feel so giddy when it's like, oh. Okay, so I'm going <laughs> to start in verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. Every, 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 every. I'm pretty sure he means every. Every blessing in the heavenly places. Even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him. In love, he predestined us for adoption. Oh, come on, let's let that one soak in. In love, he predestined us for adoption. He wanted us. He wanted us. Oh, Isn't that so amazing? I lost my place. (laughs) I got so excited I lost my place. Uh, In love, he predestined us for adoption to himself as sons through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of his will. That's amazing. It was his will to predestine us in love in adoption. He wanted us from the beginning of time. He wanted us. 
in him we have, okay, so now I'm skipping down to verse 7. In him, okay, and that's the key, which you all know. You wouldn't be here on a Thursday night if you didn't want to be in him. So it's in him. When we're in Jesus, in him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace, which he lavished upon us in all wisdom and insight. In him we have redemption. So all of those things that we don't like about ourselves, that when we say, Lord, I surrender all, except that thing that I really hate about myself. I surrender all, all that, all that right there. I can't surrender that. But in him, we have redemption from all of that stuff. All of it. It all goes away. We're the ones that go over there and say, okay, no, wait. Okay, I'm going to pick that up, and I'm going to put that back on. When he's like, will you just leave that over there? In me, you have redemption from all. All of that stuff. Man, I'm getting some freedom tonight. This is good. Uh, I don't know if anyone else is getting anything, but I'm enjoying this. I told the Lord, I'm like, if it's just for me, I'm, I'm good. Okay, then we're going to go jump down to verse 11 with me. In him, we have attained an inheritance having been predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will. In him, we haven't obtained an inheritance. We are his. We are his kids, and we have that inheritance. In him, you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and believed in him, we're sealed. Oh, this is the best part. <laughs> We're sealed with the promised Holy Spirit, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire possession of it to the praise of his glory. All that he gives us and all that we get all that. Oh, Holy Spirit, I don't want to go past that. I got to go back to that. Oh, the Holy Spirit is our guarantee. We are sealed in him. Oh, man. That's some good stuff right there. That is like, Holy Spirit, we just want to know you more. We want to know what that means. Oh, we thank you, Holy Spirit. You know, <clears throat> When we get all these things, it's not just for us to keep them for ourselves. When he gives us these things, it's so that we can partner with him. We can walk with him. But most importantly, it's so that we can know him and be known in him. Because I don't think any of us want to stand before him on that day. Again, you would not be here on a Thursday night if you, listening to me, if you did not want, you know, it's like, we don't want to stand before him and have him say, depart from me because I never knew you. And all of these things that we have in Christ is so that we can know him, to glorify him, and to bring his kingdom here on earth as it is in heaven. And that's what we get to do when we know him and we're in him and we partner with him. And it's so exciting. It's like, I never thought I would love traveling around the world. Like, you can ask my husband. I haven't been the best traveler. <laughs> and now I get to go and I get to do it. And it's like, I miss it. I'm like, December came around, and I was like, wait a second. I don't have to pack my bags to go somewhere. I was just like, I don't know if I like this right now. I'm like, wait, I want to go to another nation. I want to bring hope to people. I want to tell people about Jesus. I want to, you know, see people get hope in Christ. Because, you know, you go to these, these countries, 
And I mean, we are so blessed in America. I think every single Western world person needs to go to a third world country. I mean, you can go down to Mexico because there, it's, it's a, there's a lot of poverty there. But when you say someone's homeless and say, I'll just use um, Zimbabwe as an example where they have 84% unemployment, 84. You know, when you say you're homeless in that country, you really don't have anything. I don't know how a country survives when 84% of the people are unemployed. That is, I mean, there's a lot of corruption in that country. But we get to go and we get to bring hope. And we get to bring just the love of Jesus. And that's really, you know, we can go and we can feed people and we can do all these different things. But if we don't bring them the love of Jesus, like a pastor in South Africa that we um, heard one time, said, you know, you do all these, you know, programs and all these different things, but if you don't bring him Jesus, you're going to send him to hell with a full belly. And, you know, we want to bring the hope of Jesus. And that's what we get to do. And that's, that's why we're here. And that's why we partner with him. And that's why we do what we do. But I think the, the thing that God really wants us tonight is like, he wants to get rid of the shame. He wants to get rid of the guilt. And he wants to get rid of the condemnation because that's, he wants us to walk in the day and time that we, we live. We cannot, we can't be messing around. It's like we either need to be in or we need to be out. We need to be hot. And I'm talking to myself or we need to be cold because if we're lukewarm, he's going to spit us out. And I don't think none of us want to be spit out. Because we would not be here on a Thursday night praising the Lord if we did not want to, if we want to be spit out of his mouth. So, Michael, can you come forward? I want to pray this over us out of Ephesians. I love praying the word of God. I was at the International House of Prayer for two years in Kansas City. And, uh, yeah. And I love praying the word of God because it's the best. You know, if you don't know what to pray, pray his word. If you don't know where to go, go to some of the uh, some of the epistles, you know, go to Ephesians, Galatians, Colossians, Philippians, and pray the word of God because it's, it's the truth. And I just want to pray this over us. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and of revelation in the knowledge of him, having the eyes of your heart enlightened, that you may know what is the hope to which he has called you. What are the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints? And what is the immeasurable greatness of his power toward us who believe according to the working of his great might, that he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. And he put all things under his feet and he gave him as head over all things to the church, which is the body, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. And so, Father, I just thank you. I thank you for the truth of your word tonight, Lord. I thank you, Father, for who you have created us to be. And Lord God, I just thank you for coming right now. 
And Father, where, wherever, where anyone is struggling with guilt, with condemnation, or with shame, Father, I just thank you for breaking that off people's life tonight, Lord. I thank you, Father, for the, the truth of who you say people are. Lord, to come into people's lives tonight, Lord. I thank you for your love, Lord Jesus, casting out all fear, Lord God, that the love of the Father would come and dwell in our hearts and we would know the truth of who you say we are, Jesus. I thank you for your truth coming tonight, Lord God. I thank you, Father. I thank you, Lord Jesus. I thank you, Lord. We extol you, Lord God. We magnify you above everything else, all of the things going on in our lives, Lord. Lord, we just say that you are King of kings and Lord of lords. We magnify you, Lord God. Lord, that all of the chaos, when we come before you, gets shoved aside, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We magnify your name, Jesus. Lord, we just want to make room for you to do work in our hearts, Lord. We want to make room for you, Lord, so that you would show us areas where we need to stop speaking the things that we say over our lives. Holy Spirit, we want to give you permission to correct us where we need to be corrected, to do that work in our hearts so that we can shine brightly for you in advancing your kingdom, that you would be magnified, that you would be glorified in and through our lives, Lord. Your way is better. Your way is 
is better. So shake up the ground of all my tradition. Break down the walls of all my religion. Your way is better. Your way is better. And I will make room for you. Do whatever you want to. Whatever you want to. I will make room for you to do whatever you want to, whatever you want to. Thank you, Lord. We want to make room for you, Jesus. For you to do what you want to do in our lives. We just thank you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. We want to make room for you. We want to make room for you to set aside all of the lies and all of the false burdens and all of the things that people have said we are that you have not called us. We want to set those aside and make room for you in the truth of who you say we are and that we would walk worthy of what you have called us to that we would no longer say the things that you don't desire us to say, that we would no longer do the things that hurt you, Lord, but that we would walk in the way that you created us to walk, Jesus, that we would walk worthy of the calling that you have called us to, that Christ would receive the reward for his suffering in our lives. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We magnify your name, Jesus. We glorify you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you are worthy of all of our lives all of our lives, even the things that we don't like about ourselves. You're worthy of it all. You are worthy of it all. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. You are worthy of it all, Jesus. You are worthy of it all. You're worthy of it all. We thank you, Jesus. Lord, we just thank you for the truth of your word. We thank you, Lord, for speaking hope and speaking truth to us, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. Altars are going to be open if you want to just come and, and still be at the altar and just commune with the Lord. You're welcome to do that. If you're going to talk, if you could please go out into the foyer just to be sensitive to anything the Lord is doing in people's lives. We want to encourage you um, to come tomorrow night. Michael Petchleg will be sharing. He always brings a, a word straight from the throne room of God. Um, and so Miranda will be with us on Saturday night and Chad Debman will be with us on Sunday. So um, 
Thank you for being with us tonight, and God bless you.